How's it going, everybody? Uh, Matt Bisaccio here for WMCT Sports. Um, over the past month or so, we've been interviewing different athletes from the area for different high school uh, coaches and players and athletic directors. Uh, today, we're going to take it to the semi-pro route. We're going to be talking to the, uh, the quarterback, the uh, offensive rookie of the year for the, Net, uh, the New England Football League, an all-star selection in 2019, and the NEFL championship game MVP, throwing three touchdowns. Uh, Blake Rice. Blake, thank you so much for taking some time. Yeah, of course. Uh, Good. Glad to be here. Uh, happy to have you. Uh, so, you know, we're obviously doing this Zoom meeting because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So first things first, how have you been doing over the past uh, few months and how's your family doing? Um, I've been doing all right. So I actually just moved out to Massachusetts. Um, I was living in Connecticut with my family uh, beforehand um, while playing, actually. So um, made a job change and uh, moved out here pretty much the week before everything shut down. Oh, wow. So uh, I've gotten very used to my new living, living space. Um, <laughs> But overall, yeah, it's been good. Um, no real complaints. My family's my family's all good. I think one of my brothers was actually decently sick before everything really came out as as COVID um, or the Corona. Um, but yeah, everyone's good there. Um, I've been trying to do my at home workouts as best as possible with what I have, um, and try and just hit the field with a, a wide receiver or two um, when possible as well. Cool. Now you, you said that you just started a job. Uh, what is your job? Um, so I'm working for the uh, at the Natick Army Labs under the Department of, Def of Defense. Um, so basically, I'm working for the government and for the Army. Um, and I work on a um, an airdrop uh, team. So we deal with uh, like parachute systems for uh, cargo and personnel. Oh, that's incredible. Well, what made you get into that field? Um. I was always a math and science kind of guy. Um, and for whatever reason, when I was younger, I was a lot or very into space and, and kind of flight and stuff like that, like airplanes and whatnot. So my degree is in um, aerospace engineering um, from WPI. Uh, and my previous job did a lot more with um, like fluid flow, which wasn't really everything that I envisioned an uh, um, aerospace engineering degree to, to get me. So um, we did, uh, you know, all the parts we made at my previous job went into airplanes and, and rockets, helicopters, among of various other, um, you know, industries. But, you know, being able – my also my family, my mom and my father were both in the military as well. They were both in the Army. So getting an opportunity to uh, – help them out without actually serving is kind of cool as well. No, oh, that's, that's incredible. And I was going to say, I, I would have imagined that you went to WPI with the shirt that you're rocking right now. Yes. 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 So that's very awesome. worn down and <laughs> oh, that's all good. Sorry. I'm holding this up with a, a cardboard box right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the first time that I've done a zoom meeting too. So if I mess up on anything, it's all good. Like I said, we, we could start over or change answers or whatever. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, what about your, your thoughts on the, uh, the first, um, rocket launch, uh, launched from uh, us soil last week? How'd you feel about that? Uh, it was pretty cool. I, uh, I watched pretty much all of it, um, until it was gone and there was just a very long timer on the screen, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's incredible that we're, um, able to get another rocket launched from here, um, into outer space, um, finally getting, uh, kind of that space program back on track where it used to be, um, you know, a while ago, you know, 10, 15 years ago before we started focusing on, you know, other things, but it's definitely, I feel it's very important to, to get out there and, you know, explore and, and see what other options there are, you know, with in, in space flight and, and traveling out there. Just a very uh, interesting topic to me personally. For sure. But, For sure. Um, now, as far as like the military aspect is concerned, you said both your parents served. Um, was there ever any interest for you to possibly go and serve our country? Um, there was. Um, my dad definitely, he wasn't, you know, pushing it, but he said it would definitely be a very valuable um, option for me to consider. 
So when I was trying to decide which college to go to, um, Coast Guard was fairly high on my list as well for um, for that kind of education and football um, combo that I'd be able to get. And then obviously with the Coast Guard, I would be uh, in service as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I just decided, you know, I wasn't really no, too excited to go out. I mean, I have I rethought it over the years? Probably a few times, yeah. But, you know, oh, hey. if the day comes where I need to, then I'll be there. But otherwise, I'll just help out where I can. That's right. And you still get to help out and work with the government still with your, with your job, too. So that, that's very cool. Good for you. Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you. But, you know, you're here because you're the quarterback of the Shamrocks. You know, yes, sir. After, after 10 years of the team being away, last summer they came back. You guys have an incredible run. You guys go on to win the NEFL championship. You guys take that trip down to Florida. You guys win the Palm Bowl. Talk to me about the entire experience throughout the course of the year and, and how it was kind of playing in a community that kind of accepted you a little bit more, or the team more, not you necessarily because it was your first year, but how you kind of felt that community vibe. Um, it was awesome, actually. Um, overall, it was one of the most – fun years of football I've had um we you know we I started out kind of unsure as to whether or not I would actually play um my buddy uh Zach Grasses who kind of played both sides of the ball this past year um he told me he was playing and that they needed a quarterback uh so I went to the first practice it was actually my birthday which was interesting, um, April 25th of last year. Um, and I just had an absolutely great time being back out there because I took a year off after college. You know, I'd been training the whole time and, you know, staying ready for any opportunity that, that came up. Um, obviously, everyone's, you know, dream and goal is to make the NFL, but um, – and I was trying to take it a step lower and see if, you know, if the CFL was, was a possibility for me. And I went to some tryouts and stuff. But once I finally really, like, sank my teeth into being on the team, it was, you know, I, I never looked back. It was, it was a lot of fun. And being able to do what we did throughout the season and, and you know, at the end of the season, at the end of the, the national championship, it was pretty incredible. Um, but, yeah, the, the fan base and the, and the community – you know, we had more fans at our games than every other game we went to combined. So, um, and I think we only had four home games for the regular season, actually, because we kind of got gypped on a couple of uh, forfeit games. But, yeah, I mean, the community is great. They go into the, uh, the, pros the prospect or after. It was, it, was a good, it was a good time. That's cool. Now, what about the uh, the experience of being able to travel with the team down to Florida? You guys all kind of rooming together in Airbnbs. I mean, that must have been a pretty incredible experience for you. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a lot of fun um, because before that, we had you know, it must have been like almost three months off, um, pretty much without really seeing anyone. Uh, you know, and especially with me living in Connecticut, it wasn't. You know, without that you know, deadline, like commitment, like you have to be there for practice on this day. You know, I had other family plans and, and stuff come up. So it was hard for me to get out, um, get out to Worcester to Marlboro for the weekends and try and, and get some practice in with the guys. But, um, you know, we had a couple of practices right before we left. And then, you know, I flew down with like three or four of the other guys. Um, yeah. And staying in those Airbnbs, it was cool. You know, it was, it was like a vacation with football. So, you know, we, we, I went on to like some morning runs and, and tried to get acclimated to the heat because it was a lot different than, uh, than weather back in New England. So, um, you know, we had a couple of practices, but yeah, we went to dinner a couple of times with the, with the team or with certain members of the team and, you know, celebrated definitely after we won. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Overall, that trip was, was incredible. Now, now do you see, like that kind of an experience where you guys are away together, bonding together. Do you see that helping the chemistry for you guys now in year two? Oh, absolutely. Um, Cause you know, before that, you know, there may be a couple select few guys that, um, that I hadn't known previously to joining the team um, that I was then hanging out with 
uh, more frequently, um, you know, after games or after practices or whatnot. Um, but going down there, definitely, you know, you just lived in a house with like 10 or 12 of the guys on the team and, you know, you're seeing each other pretty much every day um, for like that whole, you know, five or six days, what, whatever it was. Um, you know, coming into year two, it definitely like strengthened a lot of those those bonds and relationships with everyone. Um, and we can't wait to get back out on the field. No, that's great. Uh, now, speaking of the, the second season for you guys here in Marlboro, uh, not really sure when it's going to start just yet with all the different phases that we have to go through and, and things like that due to the pandemic. Um, how has that kind of affected your preparation for the season and, and being able to work on different stuff that you would normally work on the practice field with your teammates? Um, yeah, so it's obviously a very interesting situation that we've been put in. Um, but, you know, I obviously I haven't been able to see everyone. I've seen, um, you know, we had an end of the year meeting pretty much right before you know, to wrap up the 2019 season, but it was right before, um, you know, the whole pandemic kind of broke out um, and we had to be quarantined. So, you know, we had a game plan going in. Um, obviously that's changed a little bit, but we're still, you know, everyone's still grinding. Everyone's still, you know, training as best they can with, you know, what they have in the, in the conditions that we're in. And for me personally, um, I still try and throw, you know, two or three times a week more if, if possible. Um, I actually go home quite frequently because I have a full gym uh, in my parents' house's basement. So, you know, I go there, work out with my brother and, uh, and my father. So I'm still getting some weight training in, not as much as I would like. But, um, you know, there's still fields open or they're open if no one sees you there. Uh <laughs> It'd be our little secret, um, our little secret. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just try and get some running in when you can. Um, we had a little, like, almost like a miniature captain's practice uh, a couple weeks ago to try and get some more um, wide receivers um, than just, you know, one or two. But I've been uh, thrown with uh, one of the wide receivers, Mitch Salage, um, pretty frequently, um, just trying to keep my arm ready and, you know, get – ourselves back into playing shape especially with the the temperature warming up a little bit that's trying to get you know acclimated to that again and kind of sweating more than just you can when you're just inside trying to do as many push-ups as possible or or whatever you're doing uh, that's cool um now for for you from year one to to year two you know you look back at your performance your rookie season um you know so a lot of ups some downs but for you personally, when you go back and you look at yourself, what are you trying to improve on the most? Um, for me, uh, just accuracy um, and execution. That's probably the, the two main things. Um, obviously, I think last year I proved that I can make something out of nothing and run a little bit. But um, this year coming up, I definitely want to try and just hit my throws, you know, take, even if it's the shorter routes, you know, take what they give you. Um, just hit the easy throws, hit everything, try and complete as many passes as possible to put us in the best situation to succeed, you know, every game, every drive, you know, every play. So I don't think I had a great completion percentage last year, and I definitely want to improve upon that this year. Um, and honestly, as an offense as a whole, I think we can we can score a lot more points than we did. So that's another goal is just to don't leave points, you know, on the field. Put them up on the scoreboard. Now you had alluded to um, your ability to run around a little bit, and I can attest to that because I remember it was, I think it was the first play of the second half. Um, I can't remember if it was against Taunton or, or North Shore, whatever it was, where you did like a bootleg and you came down the right sideline and you scored like a like a 50, 60 yard touchdown to begin the half. And I just remember yeah. thinking to myself, like, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that you were that athletic. You know, talk about your athleticism and how you feel like that, that helps you on the field. Um, yeah, I mean, prior to that, I've been caught a few times on breakaways throughout college. So I wasn't sure I was that athletic at the time either. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely helps out. You know, if, if, if the pocket breaks down or, 
Um, or you just, you know, if I just see a lane in front of me and I know the linebackers are dropping, I, being able to take off like that is, um, it's definitely helpful. Um, just pick up an easy first down. Don't have to put the ball in the air and, you know, risk any kind of, you know, defensive lineman tipping it up or, you know, a bad pass on my part, which happens, um, you know, having, having that ability to run, um, and escape, or even just to extend a play far enough for me to get a, a good throw off, um, is definitely, um, really key, um, to our success and a lot of successes of different teams. So I'm glad I can provide that, uh, for our team. Uh, absolutely. Um, now we're going to switch gears a little bit. There's really no easy transition into this topic, but you know, the other topic of the day is the, the, the protests and the, the, the unfortunate murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis at the hands of a police officer. Um, now you're the captain, you're one of the leaders on the team. Um, tomorrow I'll be speaking with Brandon Hampton, the other captain linebacker on the team as well to get his perspective on it. But I also wanted to get yours. Um, you know, have you been able to engage in any kind of conversations with some of your other teammates about the topic? Um, and if not, do you plan on having those conversations to help kind of bridge the gap between different people that come from different races and backgrounds to kind of, you know, help to kind of educate yourself and figure out what other people's perspectives are? Um, yeah, I've had some um, personal conversations with, you know, some of the guys I'm closer to and that I see a little bit more frequently, um, you know, going forward into you know, hopefully the start of the season at some point soon. Um, there might definitely be an opportunity to, to, to have, like, us captains speak to, to the rest of the members of the team. But, I mean, overall, I think we all have a, a great understanding that, you know, there is a lot of injustice going on and, and oppression. And, you know, we don't – obviously participate in anything like that on our team. I mean, I love every person on the team. Um, like they're part of my family. Um, but you know, that, that is a problem in our country at the moment. And obviously things are being done to, to stand up against that. Um, personally, I haven't gone to any protests, but I have a lot of friends and guys on the team that have gone. Um, and I support that hundred percent. Um, I mean, I've kind of just been quarantined. So I just, you know, and my car is not doing so hot. So I just try and stay put when possible. But um, yeah, I a hundred percent support um, my teammates doing what they feel is right to, to stand up against that. Cool. And another kind of an extension of that, um, you know, this kind of, starts to remind people of, of Kaepernick back in 2016 and the, and the kneeling and the, the, the fight against that. Now you would assume that there's going to be a lot of players that are going to be kneeling across the country and in, in, any, in any sport, they're going to be kneeling during the national anthem. Um, do you support your teammates' choices to do stuff like that? Have you put it into, in, in any thought as to whether or not you will do something like that? Um, I have thought about it. Um, personally, I'm not sure. I would actually, you know, if a, if a lot of guys on the team do, and that's their choice, obviously. Um, then I might, you know, consider it. I've never really thought to do that previously. Um, I kind of, you know, support in silence. Um, you know, I, I've always stood for the national anthem. Um, I kind of have my routine. Um, not that that should outweigh anything that anyone else um, wants to do during that. But, I, yeah, I fully support. You know, it's not about um, – you know, kneeling during the national anthem is not about, you know, not supporting the troops or anything. Um, obviously, with my family having served, some negative thoughts have come about from that, obviously, as we've seen with the Kaepernick whole situation. But like they said, it's not about that. It's about, you know, standing up for the oppression in our society and in our country. So, um, I yeah, I would not um, be opposed to any of my teammates doing that at all. Um, and there may come a time when I join them as well. That's no, I, personally, I'm undecided. Um, I could go either way. You know, I support their cause a hundred percent. Um, I've just personally never done that before. So no, um, I'm not sure yet. No, it, it, it's a very difficult question. 
to, to answer. It's a very dif uh, difficult, delicate time. We have to choose our words very carefully. So I, I totally, yeah. I totally appreciate your perspective and you answering that question as thoughtfully as you did. So thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Yeah. Of and, course. Uh, yeah. And that, that's pretty much all I got for this one, man. I, I appreciate okay. you taking the time, Blake. I appreciate you answering all these questions, especially the couple at the end. They're uncomfortable questions, but I feel as though they're, they're questions that kind of help to de develop and start a dialogue. And, and hopefully that's kind of the goal that we can take from here. Absolutely. I agree 100%. All right, Blake. Well, hey, you take care, man. And uh, I'll see you down the road, okay? Sounds good. You take care as well. All right. Thank you so much. Of course.